Hey, I'm Joel. Uh, I'm in Sweden, one of my favourite places in the world. It's the 2,892nd day in a row I've been running, and today you're coming with me. Let's go. Today I'm running with my one of my favourite Swedes. This is Christopher Sundberg. Hello. Hello. Morning, Christopher is uh, probably the coolest guy in Stockholm. <laughs> right now, I'm pretty cold. That's for sure. Yes, that's it's kind of a chilly morning here. Uh, Christopher um, is the founder of one of the biggest and best video game developers in Europe, really. And I would say in the world. Yeah, I'd to be. I know you say in the world. I'm, I'm trying to be humble. But... <laughs> It's hard being humble when you're as good as you are. The, <laughs> and uh, vi uh, anybody who knows anything about video games will have heard of the Just Cause series of games, of which Christopher was the brain behind it, the creative director. He's part Rico Rodriguez, I think, aren't you? Yeah, I wrote it uh, in my kitchen. <laughs> How many years ago was the first one? Uh, I don't know, it's 16 years ago. 16 years ago. And oh, this is a bit garbled. Yeah, no, it's cool. Ooh. And uh, Just Cause 4 is about to come out next week on Tuesday, right? Yeah, it's the fourth one is releasing on Tuesday. So we can presumably expect more grappling irons and uh, uh, off road and uh, uh, wingsuits, parachutes, as much yeah, explosive as you can. It's never. Uh, as well as uh, video games, Christopher is. My pulse went right through the roof. That's all right. Don't worry. Christopher has um, uh, started a sportswear company, Arc, and uh, is extremely into the sport of swim run, which is something that hasn't really got the traction outside of Sweden that it deserves. Popular in the UK. Uh, yesterday, maybe he encouraged me to do it. <laughs> His charity swim run, which was freezing cold, and anybody that follows me on <coughs> Instagram will see me freezing my uh, my butt off. But the uh, essence of swim run, he was born in the archipelago, right? Yeah, it was. <coughs> I can't remember. I'm not really. Uh, <coughs> Person to speak for the sport, but <coughs> I uh, <coughs> uh, I started 2014, but that was like five years after the sport was invented. Um, and I started off with drunken bet, right? Like many things in Sweden, <laughs> and uh, like could someone possibly? Swim and run <coughs> from uh, the island of Utah to Sandham. How far is that? I don't know how, <coughs> how far the. Uh, <coughs> Christopher is uh, recovering from a cold. I said, It'll be fine. You'll feel better after you run. <laughs> I'm sure you will feel better after you run. <coughs> My name is Lars Christopher, it's Walter White. <laughs> <laughs> so it started off as a, <coughs> as a drunken bet. And uh, then, <coughs> then they made a sport out of it. It's a pretty extreme sport by all accounts. So uh, well, you and I yeah. followed the uh, World Championships this year. Yeah. 75 which, which miles. Goes the other way around. Right, I see. It goes from Sandham to Utah. Uh -huh. Which is uh, in total 65 kilometers of uh, running. Trail running like this? Yep. Yeah. Wow. A little bit. Mostly. And uh, 10 kilometers of uh, swimming. 10 kilometers of open water sea <coughs> I was tired just following this race in a boat. 
<laughs> I can't imagine what it would have been like to compete. I tried last year, and failed. Oh yeah, you've got a, you didn't finish because you had a shoulder injury. Left. And how is your shoulder? Because that's been plaguing you. Yeah, it's, uh, it's okay, I guess. Uh, <coughs> better than your lungs, apparently. <laughs> the trouble with starting yep. on an uphill is that uh, you never get a chance to Oops. So uh, do you want to do an easy trail or Well let's stick to the easy one, I don't want you coughing up a lung when we uh... <coughs> I will do it otherwise that's more of you tripping over with the camera. Oh, it's alright. If I trip over, it just make it look more interesting. So, what are your plans with Arc, the swimwear brand? Because I raced in an Arc suit yesterday and it was amazing. <laughs> well, Arc came up. Um, so, I've been doing swim runs since uh, 20, 2014, I think. Uh, <coughs> I started running in maybe 2012, so I've never been into sports at all. Right. <coughs> so did, did swim run just like capture well, your I'll imagination get to that. or? Uh... I'll get to that, so it's a journalist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <coughs> no, I, uh, uh, I started running uh, because my divorce. Uh huh. And uh, just to clear my head. Yeah. And uh, <coughs> my friend Dennis, he uh, he's been a swimmer. Uh, and uh, he told me about. I was like, oh, there's this book called Swim Run, Swim and Run. Yeah, light and running. Light running is not more like <coughs> difficult enough. Uh, I was like, well. I I can't I can't swim <coughs> because of a, a drowning accident when I was a kid. Jesus, really? <coughs> yeah. You just didn't like the water. I've been scared shitless of water ever since. And uh, they said, well, there's this competition where you just swim and run from uh, Sandham to Utah. Well, that's not possible. <laughs> it's like, who would do such a thing? That is pretty crazy. <laughs> if you look at it on a map, it's a long way. Well, it is a long way. Good. Yeah, so, so it's just a, a crazy sport. And I, I really hope <coughs> that it will uh, develop into uh, an exercise. Because in Sweden, at least, so many people live close to lakes, yeah, close to trails like this. So why not just run in a wetsuit and? Just jump in the water when you feel like it. Sure, yeah. Well, when I, when you and I went running, when was it, uh, in the summer? Yeah. It was very easy to just to get in a lake and swim across it. Yeah, exactly. Apart from the fact my swimming is terrible. Yeah, you're good. You beat uh, the guy who goes under the nickname Swim A Lot. <laughs> well, maybe he doesn't run a lot. Uh, the running. Well, he does too. We did an ultra last week. Really? <laughs> And what, I came in 18th yesterday, he, he was behind me, that's amazing. 19th? Wow. Oh, I'm quite pleased with that. <laughs> I wasn't pleased at the time, that's I can tell Daniel. you. I did a uh, rock with him. Oh, okay. Twice. I think I was running with him for a while. It was a, quite an event yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> but your suit was really good, I have to say. I tested in anger, as it was yesterday. <laughs> It really held up. The buoyancy was good, it was warm. 
it uh, you know, the free movement was good, I could run it really yeah. easily. That's the point. Presumably, <laughs> other wetsuits, they aren't designed specifically <laughs> to swim them. Just coughing up. Uh, Come on. Interview with Walter White yeah. continues. <laughs> It wasn't even a big evening yesterday, we barely had any drinks whatsoever. <laughs> How far do these woods go? Like this, to uh, me, this looks like archetypal Sweden, like this is, well, could be anywhere. It's pretty on forever. Uh, this is National Reserve. So it's, uh, it's completely protected by the state. Yeah. I've been to uh, northern Sweden, looks exactly like this. Yeah, that's a nice part <laughs> of being Swedish. Uh huh, what's this? This is pretty fun. Uh, you know about geocaching? Oh, right, okay, this is geocache. Uh, here's, here's a cache. Oh, alright. <laughs> okay, we found it, we weren't even looking for it. Yeah. Nice. Uh, they call it the Global Sport. And they said, Congratulations, you found it. By accident or through coincidence, what's in the can? What stuff is in it? And then they just go on and on. Yeah, all right. yeah. Weird people. Yeah, weird people <laughs> running, running on a Sunday morning. That'd be very strange. Weird people, there, there's so many weird people out in this forest. I, uh, on numerous time, occasions, I've been uh, running across this guy playing uh, an accordion. What? All alone. Like, not on the trail, like... Sitting in the woods. Out in the forest, somewhere. Playing the chorus. You can just hear, hear the tunes. <laughs> this is why I love yeah. Sweden. Swedes, be real. Swedes are an eccentric bunch and, uh, of people. I try to snap a picture of him. And uh, every time, I just like... started to sneak around. <laughs> he stopped playing. Really? So I couldn't find him. So, uh, that was quite funny. And then there's this guy with the with the violin. Right. Uh, he's a bit more social though. He uh, <coughs> he uh, <laughs> he never stops talking. He's like you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but he's uh, he's a real weirdo. Right. Not I'm, just a weirdo. I'm just a fake weirdo. Yeah. And uh, <coughs> he, uh, he's just goes around these woods playing his violin <laughs> and talk to people randomly. Yeah. In Swedish, I guess. Yeah, I think he'd probably be arrested if that was in the UK. <laughs> At least he's, he's wearing clothes. Well, that's good. Yeah. And in Sweden. That's relatively unusual. So what are you doing for the Just Cause 4 launch? Are you off to... Uh, uh, I'm travelling to New York. Uh, yeah, Avalanche have a sweet uh, studio in New York as well as in the Stockholm. Game's, uh, developed there, so I feel great to be with the team. How many people work on that game? Ooh, I don't think I can say. Many. More than, many. More than just... Like, Three digits. Really? Yeah. Wow, sir. It's a hell of a game. I love Just Cause 3, I have to say. One of my favourites. If there's something extremely gratifying about blowing <laughs> stuff up. <laughs> yeah, it's... An Australian journalist called it the chicken soup of gaming. Yeah, it's just satisfying. Yeah. It makes you feel better. You can play it for like 15 minutes and, uh, and then play something else. So what are your plans for um, ARC? You've obviously got a, a award-winning suit out. The, yeah. the winners of the men and the women at the World Championships were wearing ARC Twice. suits. Twice. Yeah. So... Uh, it's <coughs> it's uh, 
my new little pet thing. <laughs> I wouldn't call it a pet thing, but yeah, it's a uh, it's a project. Yeah, I've invested in and uh, just for, for my private money. Yeah, just because I love the sport. Yeah, I love enduro sport, <coughs> and I really want to build arc as. Uh, not the biggest. Uh, we're, we're avoiding water here. <laughs> Oops. When I was uh, in my best, this wouldn't even. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. I've got to lose 10 kilograms <laughs> after yesterday. It's horribly apparent that I'm after way too yesterday. heavy. The running. You ran 15k yesterday. Yeah. It was way more of a struggle than it should have been. <laughs> I was 17 minutes slower than the wind. But, uh, Ark, I hope it can be like the... It's not bold, but definitely the biggest brand within Swim Run. Right. And that's not very hard. But, uh, definitely... My, my goal is to build the biggest brand within endurance sports. Yep. Well, like me, you're kind of interested in the more extreme end of yeah. effort. Like and jogging. All right, now I'm jogging, but <laughs> if we skip that part. Yeah. Uh, so this is an interesting question. It's, like, it's so much fun <coughs> to... Uh, and hours and hours and I don't really care about pace like I'm running six minutes per kilometer pace or 430 or or seven right that's not really the point no no of course the point is to uh, uh, oh there it is Fat going to uh, endure, yeah, for many many hours. Yeah, uh, we following the white dots. Well, yeah, uh, I was trying to uh, <laughs> get you to this uh, fun area. Oh, right. Whoop! <laughs> yeah, don't kill yourself. Pauline <laughs> wouldn't be happy with me. Uh, ah, it's over there, I think. So why why do people why are more more and more people uh, oh. engaging with is that the Russian barbecue over there yeah uh, wouldn't mind doing some some proper train yeah, yeah sort of step uh, why swim run no well why extreme sports swim run just being one I of the extreme sports it, if you look at the middle age among people that does extreme sports. It doesn't have to be extreme. It's like keeping up a, a training regime uh, or a regular uh, schedule. Yeah. It's like I started training because of an emotional chaos yeah. uh, with my divorce. Yeah. And uh, I was like drinking too much Obviously, uh, not exercising enough, uh, and uh, just continue. Uh, and uh, I just need somewhere to to clear my head. Yep, that's reasonable. And once I met Paulina, my my wife, uh, she's like, "What the fuck? What are you doing? It's like you're on your couch. It's like you have a company that's doing really well." And you're just whining. <laughs> and you so, both made this choice in your life to get divorced. Sounds so like all of us. And go out drumming. Good it's like it doesn't matter if it's. Uh, let's go here. Uh, if it's three kilometers or 30. No, right. It's just as you go out and do something. <coughs> and uh, that's how it started for me. And, and a year later. I signed up for my uh, my first 
uh, race, yeah. which ironically enough was an ultra. <laughs> and before that, ultra <laughs> at all. Uh, I don't know why, but it seemed like a good idea at the time. Uh, it was the uh, an ultra race on uh, the west coast of Sweden. Uh -huh. And uh, oops, uh, it was uh, 70 kilometers trail like Jeez. this. Uh, took me almost 10 hours. Oh. So what did you? <laughs> we can go. There's a good reason why all the trees are kind of small in this yeah. area. Christopher will tell us about that. Yeah. Um, it's well, near that tower, isn't it? Uh, no, that, that's in a completely wrong direction. Oh, all right. uh, or we can do it that way. Uh, well, but this one, welcome. this area is called the uh, Russian Barbecue. <coughs> Russian Barbecue. And uh, it was actually a Russian Barbecue uh, in the early 90s or mid 90s. Uh, the Russian Embassy decided to have a barbecue. This, uh, like, uh, barbecue stick you can buy in a gas station. Yeah. Uh, and uh, they went out here in this area, and you can see the trees, like, <laughs> they haven't really recovered. Uh, and uh, uh, being Russians, they drank a lot of vodka, got so drunk, and just left. So the barbecues uh, spilled out and set fire and caused the biggest forest fire in uh, this uh, area's history. Yeah. I think it's the biggest forest fire in, in, in Swedish history. Go Russia. So uh, there's actually a plaque somewhere uh, that, is, that's, that tells the story without telling what nation it was. But uh, that's the truth, <laughs> dear readers. Uh, let's <laughs> <laughs> or viewers. If you're getting us lost <laughs> in the Swedish wilderness... Oops. Hey! You all right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, in my youth, I would run here without any problems at all. I, uh, You're not as young as we used to be now. I got injured stuff. on the Biotira uh, World Championships last year, uh, in 17. Uh, and it's like, I just watched the list of people that signed up, and I wasn't humble enough realize what a beast of a race this is yeah at least it's, it's like a marathon and a half and I've done swim runs before like I've done rock man twice which is pretty brutal it sounds uh, extreme. Over there, I think uh, and but uh, Atila is such a, a mental challenge it's like you're there with the, the world elite, it's after all, it's like the the world championships. Yeah, and I was like, well, I've been I've been doing a bunch of races this year, uh, about half the distance. A rock run is like it's half the distance, but it's four or five times the, the elevation climb. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it's like the same amount of hours. But uh, over a longer distance, how yeah. could it be? And, uh, oh, how hard could it be? <laughs> and uh, extremely hard. It's transport. Over there. Yeah, and after a while, I was like, I was feeling the, my shoulder. Uh, this is quite fun. This is uh, uh, a military area. Oh, great! We're not supposed to be. Oh, that's good that's to know. Keep out. Yeah. And uh, uh, it's like in the start, you're there with Daniel Hanson and Dele Mulberry. Uh, well, not that last year, but. Uh, and and the, like the world elite. It's like so pumped. And uh, it's like I did the first swim, which is pretty brutal. That's, it's, the, uh, that's the long one, right? It's a mile. Uh, it's, or yeah, it's, it's quite long. It's, it's a mile. The first swim at five o'clock in the morning. Oh. And uh, it's like uh, Daniel, my, my partner, has to do it in, in twos. He's like, What the hell are you doing? Like, you're just off the course. Uh, it's like, What do you mean? Uh, no, I'm fine. And then there's a run, which is uh, even rockier than this. Uh, and I was like, rough. my arm 
was just hanging like this. Uh, Even then, right at the yeah, beginning. I couldn't feel it. And uh, I was like, there's something weird going on with my arm. And we got to the second swim. It's just because I'm not uh, warmed up. And uh, <clears throat> still, I was like, since I was pushing with my, my right arm, we were go like going to that, which we are going now. All right. Uh, and uh, Danny is like, what the hell are you doing? You're like, uh, it's like swimming with an anchor. All oh, right. I was like, well, I'm pushing as hard as I can. But you're just pushing uh, with one arm. Yeah. And uh, one runs uh, about two, three hours in. We uh, bumped it by, ex by accident <laughs> into this uh, spectator. We happen to be a doctor. Oh yeah. I was like, uh, is it a good idea to continue if I can't feel my arm? You couldn't feel anything? No. Jeez. And she's like, can you feel this? Like, me, nope. And uh, a colleague of her was walking around us and he's like, you couldn't feel when I uh, pinched your arm, right? Uh, just like you did. <laughs> <laughs> That's got to be a bad sign. Uh, it's like, there's no way of continuing. Uh, that must have been disappointing after all the training you did. Well, uh, what I came to realize is that I had too little respect for the race. Right. Uh, I, uh, it's like Rockman. It's, it's tough. But it's, uh, and it's the same amount of hours. Like, 10, 12 hours of, of activity. Yeah. Uh, but uh, the mental challenge of doing the, the swim world championships was just like. Because uh, rock man, so, you, you, the elevation gain is insane in that. Yeah, how, how many stairs do you have to climb at the end? <laughs> no, it's uh, in total, it's, I think it's 2.5, uh, 2,500 meters, meters of elevation gain. And uh, it's fun because it's, but it's a, it's a 40 kilometer run or trek, yeah. I should say. Uh, but it's, uh, uh, it starts, you jump off this boat and uh, they're telling this weird story about the rock mountain, blah, 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 blah. It's a, it's a big an excuse for the weird start. Yeah. Uh, but it's, uh, uh, it starts with jumping off a boat. You swim into this uh, little little bay with just rocks rising above you. And then it's a, a 900 meter swim. Right. And uh, um, uh, and after that, you get to the first run, which is like a, a steep hill, uh -huh. like this. And I'm not joking. It's, it's, it's like a, a mud hill. <laughs> it's like that movie, Hamburger Hill. <laughs> uh, and it's like, the first year I was like, I'm gonna die. My, my pulse, I, I was in good shape back then. Uh, my pulse was just racing through the roof. And uh, it's like, but it's like, uh, no, there's no way I can run here. But then, uh, uh, it's like I was watching to the side of me, they had like the word elite, and they were, they were struggling too. Well, wow, that makes you feel a bit better. Are we doing a distance? Yeah. Yeah? No, well, yeah. we're about halfway. What? Yeah. <laughs> um, no, we're about, we need another mile, that's about it. Right. Uh, asphalt, that's okay? Yeah, that's fine. That's yeah. nice. Uh, no, no rocks to trip over. No. <laughs> and uh, uh, but if the elites are feeling it, yeah, that's gonna I, make I you feel like, better. What the hell? So have I signed up for? And uh, and after that, just like slightly downhill, it's a couple of swims, and then it just goes uphill, 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 up until the. Uh, uh, Walk, which is the famous like 
squared shaped morning. Uh, hey. <laughs> uh, squared rock. Uh -huh. uh, which is, I think it's like 700 meters above the water level. Oh, yeah. And uh, and when you get to there, they take the, uh, the race photo. Right. And uh, then it's downhill. Uh, it's just going from, from like a little bit nuts to batshit crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it's like uh, they have one one part of the uh, the race that they call the seaside sprint. <laughs> The story behind it is that they uh, that was the area of the race course which they didn't try out themselves. So they thought it was just like a gravel road. Oh right. But it turned out to be like two meter <laughs> rocks through <laughs> they have like and so two point seven kilometers took us and we were, we've, I've been jumping between rocks my whole life and uh, <laughs> it took us about 45 minutes, two kilometers. Really? <laughs> morning. Morning. <laughs> it's just, ah, it's such a fun race. But I think doing stuff like that, you know, getting past those hardships and difficulties and really you know, pushing your mental fortitude yeah. into places it isn't used to going is kind of good for you. Just like this, it's like, I wasn't supposed to run this morning. <laughs> now you feel better, right? Uh, well, once you've got home, you had a shower. And... <laughs> yeah, but it's uh, it's fun because I my hurdle is, is not the actual run. It's the uh, getting out of bed. Yeah. Well, and, and once I'm <coughs> as if to illustrate our point. Uh, uh, once I'm out of bed and on my driveway, it's it's fine. It's okay. Yeah, well that's that's why the running streak has worked for me, as I've got no excuse to not run, right? Yeah. You can always find an excuse to run. Unless you're protecting a eight year streak in which case <laughs> the last thing you want to do is not run <laughs> yeah of course but it's uh, it's been we haven't met a lot of people on this run but what I like about New York so much uh, hey, hey. Uh, is uh, that it's like everyone runs I can, when I go out, I'm just a, a guy among like hundreds and hundreds of people yeah, I've run running around the, the Hudson River or the East River. Yeah. It's, and the East River is more interesting than, than the West. Right. Uh, I've run in Central Park and it was pretty packed yeah. with people. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. And it's like, I... When I'm running there, it's like I can get passed by a ultra runner, and I can pass an 80-year-old yeah. uh, Chinese woman, yeah. just like in in jeans and a and a sweater. At least you have that. Yeah, it's it's amazing. I think everybody should run. Everybody would feel better about it. It's just the thought of it puts people off. Yeah, and it's so easy. It's like. Pretty much you could run naked. <laughs> I've tried it, it's slightly difficult. <laughs> Did you use tape? No, there are practical <laughs> considerations. <laughs> but the um, but you know we, we we grow up running as kids, like yeah. your kids are all running around all the yeah. time. Petter is speeding about can't help himself. But we lose oh. the we lose touch with the pleasure of running. We have to force ourselves back into it yeah. as adults. What are we at? 485, so right. we get five. Get get the car. Nice one. Uh, no, but I buy my daughter, she's nine. And uh, 
my crazy neighbor. He's like, right girls, go out running. And it was at 8 o'clock in the evening. Right. Uh, this time of the year, which is pitch dark. Yeah. And uh, they were wearing like oops, uh, headlamps. And they spent easily an hour out in the pitch dark forest running on the trails. And uh, that's just amazing. Oh, I love that. But if you get kids used to exercise and running and doing things that are difficult, <coughs> I think there's a human need to do things that are difficult. Uh, uh. Yeah, everybody needs to do something that's difficult. Yeah. And life is so easy by comparison with how it used to be yes. 100 years ago. Yeah. We have to make that up somehow. Uh, I have friends. Like, uh, there's this guy uh, that I've come in contact with through running and swim run called uh, John Joseph. He's the uh, lead singer of Chromax. Uh, he was homeless when he was a kid. No way. On the streets of New York. Seriously. He lived out in a, a burned out building. Jesus. Uh, with like a knife in his pocket. And it's like, as a, I don't even, I'm not even sure that he was a teenager when he witnessed his first murder. Oh. Uh, and he was on crack cocaine. Uh, he's done. He's been. It's like he he uh, a wall from the <laughs> the navy. Uh, so he's done like everything. Yeah. And today he's been vegan since the early eighties, I think. Wow. Well. Uh, and uh, he uh, bakes like at least four iron hands a year. Well. And he's approaching sixty. Really? Yeah. He's somebody I've got to run with. That would be fascinating. <laughs> and uh, it's like every... Uh, it's like every corner in New York. He's got a story to tell. Wow. So, uh, the last time I met him, he was like, uh, Where are you staying? I was like, I'm at the uh, Bowery Hotel. I was like, oh, really? He's like, these two... Uh, that was the gas station over there. Uh, in the 80s. Where he used to buy, uh, buy crack over the counter. <laughs> <laughs> and I told the staff, like, oh, this is the urban port again. Yes, yeah, got on. It's another one. Got on New York. Yes. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I asked the staff, it's like, do you know what this building was before you turned it into a fancy hotel? And they're like, eh, it used to be like an apartment building. And I was like, <laughs> and I was like no, no, no. A bit more sketchy there wasn't. <laughs> any apartment buildings uh, in New York in the 80s. It was actually a gas station and I could buy crack over the counter and believe it was new. <laughs> and like, oh, really? And, and the building next door is a homeless shelter where uh, KRS-1 wrote his first first rights. Really? Yeah. So it's amazing. It's just a city filled Tell the stories. Yeah, oh, for sure. And we, you and I must go there. Yeah, sometime. yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'd love to run with the guy. <laughs> John Joseph sounds fascinating. <laughs> As you pair past, like, uh, whatever the park is called, it's like, uh, this is where the gang hitmen buried their bodies. <laughs> and this is where I got shot here in the leg. And he pulls down his pants. Uh, he's got a bullet hole. <laughs> he's got a bullet hole in his leg. <laughs> well, this run has been interesting. But yeah. Not that interesting. <laughs> we didn't get shot at. We trespassed no. in a military area. Yeah. We did some it's hills. A, I fell over. No, it's, it's a national reserve. So it's uh, apart from the other uh, parts of this place where the state is just building like crazy. Yeah. This is completely protected. Uh, so it's, uh, it's a real nice run. 
and well, this is where we started. Yeah, that was a pretty brutal hill to start. Over there. Yeah. Five sixty-four. There you go. Five <laughs> k. Did it start my watch again? Typical. <laughs> Well, we'll run to the car. Thanks for coming out. I appreciate yeah. you didn't feel. And you did a great race yesterday. Yeah. Uh, it was amazing. Still recovering. Uh, it's like well, my feet are still cold. <laughs> the first swim run. Yeah, you do what it's called the the craziest race in the world. How much did we raise for your charity, the Children's Cancer Charity? Uh, I think around forty thousand in Swedish kron. That's great. Four thousand pounds. So we donate every penny to uh, the charity. That's great. Well, well, thanks, dude. As thank ever, you, appreciate yeah. it. Good running. Ah. Thanks for watching. If you like what you see, don't forget to like and subscribe if you can. Give us your comments and feedback and questions, and tell me who else you want me to run with. And Not we'll, me. we'll have a chat. Not Not me. While we're running. Never. Never. Take it easy. Okay. See you later. <laughs>